Hi, I'm Linda Nice Landis, here to wish you all a blessed Advent. When I was a child, a large part of preparing for Christmas took place in the kitchen. My mom was famous for her cakes and cookies. When my brother and I were small, she would bake to earn a little extra cash, and I can remember her bagging and weighing cookies to sell. When she began her Christmas baking for the year, I was always underfoot, so she always had small jobs for me so I could help. Uh, for peanut butter cookies, it was making that pattern with the fork, and for the cherry blinks that we're going to do today, it was putting the cherry on top. So we would always have large tins of cookies that we would use for gifts and take to every family gathering, and I continued the tradition for many years. Uh, but lately, I've reduced the amount of cookies that I bake. Uh, we don't have that large a family anymore. Uh, a lot have passed away or moved away. So we don't have these big Christmas gatherings that we used to have. Um, so anyway, I usually make four different kinds of cookies. And we end up eating quite a few of them. But I usually make Toll House, of course, uh, Steve's favorite oatmeal the peanut butter cookies, and cherry blinks, my favorite. Uh, so the cherry blink is a kind of a cake-like cookie, a little crunchy on the outside, dates and nuts on the inside, not overly sweet, and it has that little cherry on top. Uh, it does contain nuts and gluten, so if you have allergies or sensitivities, uh, just beware. You don't want to use, the, you don't want to eat these. So I don't remember anybody else, uh, any of my other relatives making uh, cherry blinks. So I, I went to Pinterest to see where they came from. And apparently it was a um, 1950 Betty Crocker cookie cookbook that they first saw the recipe. So this recipe is uh, about 70 years old, which in the great scheme of things isn't that old for a recipe. There are much older ones around. So I prepared the dough in advance so that the video won't take too much time. And uh, the recipe that I use is for a double batch, which means you're going to get between 60 and 72 cookies, depending on how uh, generous you are with the, the spoonfuls. So here's, your, here's the recipe. You get ready and set aside two to three cups of crushed Wheaties. Uh, you can use corn flakes, but we always liked Wheaties. They're, they have a little bit uh, sweeter flavor to them. Uh, 30 maraschino cherries cut in half. I always wanted mom to put a whole one in, and she wouldn't. Um, and I tried it once, and I know why now. They're just It's just too much. Actually, these cherries I've cut into quarters uh, just to cut down on so much the, of the sweetness. Uh, you're going to... Oh, you could also use candied cherries, but I never tried that. Uh, preheat the oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? You're going to sift together and set aside two cups of sifted flour, two teaspoons of double-acting baking powder, one-half teaspoon of baking soda, and one-half teaspoon of salt. Just set that off to the side. Get your electric mixer and beat together two thirds of a cup of shortening. I don't use butter, I think it spreads out too far. That uh, has to do with the melting point, I think. I'm not sure of all the chemistry involved. But two thirds of a cup of shortening, one cup of sugar and two eggs. Beat that up really, really well, get the lumps out. And then add three tablespoons of milk and one teaspoon of vanilla. Mix it up again. Then you add your dry ingredients, the flour and uh, baking powder, soda, and salt. Dump that in. And excuse me, I have a phone ringing. Okay, so you've mixed up your dough. You've added the flour mixture. And you're going to have a really sticky dough. Um, you're going to then stir in one cup of chopped dates. You can use raisins if you want to. I've never tried that. We've always used dates and one cup of chopped nuts. And I like walnuts. OK, so uh, let me just change the angle here. And so you can see what my hands are doing. 
Okay, so um, we're going to scoop up about a spoonful of the dough, the nice sticky dough, and drop it into the Wheaties. And then you kind of roll that around. Go ahead, use your hands. Wash them first, of course. Um, and you're going to get a little ball that looks like this. It's a little ball of dough coated with Wheaties. And you're going to put that on the... There we go. <laughs> put that on the, the, uh, the sheet. Uh, it says in the recipe to use a, great, a greased baking sheet, but I have come to really like using parchment since there's a little less cleanup time. And then you take a piece of maraschino cherry and you just stick that in the, in the middle so it looks like a little eyeball. Maybe these would be good for Halloween too, but I've never, it's always been a Christmas cookie. Okay. The one time I tried um, using an entire, a whole maraschino cherry, it was really disgustingly sweet. So I guess my mother was right, as mothers usually are. Okay. So you're going to just keep going until you fill this up. These will spread out. You need to keep about uh, two inches between them. Uh, let's see. That's about right. I can usually get 12 on a sheet. And um, you're going to pop it in the, the oven at 400 for about 10 to 12 minutes. Just keep an eye on them. Uh, my first batch today came out a little dark. And I think it's because I waited to start the timer. <laughs> okay. And I do have some in the oven right now, so let's just take a peek at them and see how they're doing. Oh, they look lovely. Okay. Oh, you can see how these were a little too close. And they're like rumming, uh, bumping into each other. But uh, this is what they kind of look like. I'm going to leave them in for another minute or so because they're still a little pale on top. Uh, but they're looking good. So those are your cherry blanks. And uh, let me see here. I usually cool them on a wire rack. Oops, sorry, let me let me talk to you. There you go. So I usually cool them on a wire rack, and once they're cool, you can eat them as soon as you can touch them, and they're really good, especially with a glass of milk. Um, so even though my mom's been gone for about 12 years now, um, her influence goes on, as as do all of our families. They uh, the influence is there through all the holidays and hopefully the memories as well. So I thank you for watching today. Have a very merry Christmas.